Delighted to welcome former Tyrone star Kyle Coney to the show. Good morning to you, Kyle. Good morning, good morning. Uh, just on that clip, so that question was basically about the, the weaker foot and, and it came off the back of an interview with Shane McGuigan, who's obviously shooting the lights out off both feet for, for Derry this year. When, when he talks about Gavin Devlin helping him develop his right foot during lockdown, is this something that you, you've seen over the last couple of years, that McGuigan developing this? And, and also, is it something that, that Devlin has been working quite a bit on with, with other players? Yeah, yeah. Um, Shane McGuigan's a fantastic footballer for first and foremost. He's he's probably in the top four or five Ulster forwards at the moment. So um, I'm not sure where Gavin Devlin's um, getting the the confidence or, or the because he never kicked the ball too much when he was playing. <laughs> um, so, but not de definitely like you, you need both feet nowadays. There's no there's no player or there's no top marksman in the country that wants to be dominated on on one side. So do, totally, I'd be fully uh, believing in that you need two feet. Shane McGuigan is very, very dominant off his left. Like he, he can score from anywhere, but off his weaker foot on his right, he's brilliant as well. So it, it takes two, it takes them both, you know, to jink, light, jink left and be able to knock it over the bar. So for me, you know, it's something every player needs to be working on, no matter what area of the pitch you're on. You know, you need to be able to get out of trouble in the defence by using your weaker foot. So. It's definitely something that, that Shane has been working on and I, I watched the Cavan and uh, Derry game a few weeks ago and, and he was superb. Like. Mm. Yeah, he really has been one of the, the stars of this league so far. It, is that something that's constantly coached at senior inter-county level at the moment? Those really simple drills off, off both feet? Yeah, it's something that's been... It's one of those things that never goes away. It's always harped on at, you know, you need to be practised in the basic skills because nine times out of ten, it's the basic skills that let someone down in a game. You know, if you're not confident of turning back and turning onto your wicker foot, whether that may be right or left, you know, it's going to let you down somewhere along the line if you're not using the the, the hand pass off the right and left and using the correct sort of technique all the time. It's definitely something that, that could let you down a bag full. And it's always, you know... In drills, you're always told at uh, inter-county level, you know, weak, weaker foot, right, left, right foot, left foot, right foot, right hand, left hand. So it's something that never goes away. You know, I, I've been involved in coaching at, at the at the club, and it starts at, at youth level, starts at youth level, and it just continues right on. There had been a sense, Kyle, that over the last few years, maybe skills had been less of a factor in GEA, or, or just hadn't been encouraged. But I think what we're starting to see with the way football has been played so far this year is that that was totally false to think that, that maybe players weren't allowed to show their skills as much as often, as much as they, they would usually have been, say, in the 2000s. But it doesn't mean that their skills have gone anywhere. These are incredibly gifted players all throughout inter-county football. And what we're seeing this year has just been incredible as a result of them being let off the leash. Uh, I think it's down to the inter-county game is that... Um under the microscope where every every mistake is is maximized to the absolute limit and it's one mistake could cost you the game uh that's that's probably where where the it comes till uh, you're talking about not letting fellas off the leash and we're probably seeing this year with a shorter season leagues being played in north and south no um no pre warm up competitions so uh, i would be it's, def it's definitely something that you can see that the skills are, of players there are fantastic to see. David Clifford, Shane Walsh, who can, you know, Shane can take a 45 off the ground with either foot, which is unheard of. Um, you know, we, we have seen the skills uh, all throughout the league, all across all the divisions, that teams are being let off the leash. They're not being, I don't think that the managers are putting as much emphasis on, you know, that one mistake because I think that, you know, the, the reward... Uh, outweighs that you know you're going to get you need to put a, a certain amount of risk into your game to, to get to the level of the carries the dublins the, the Tyrones of the world donegal so that's where that's where teams are at they're definitely managers are not you know putting as much emphasis on, on possession see a lot more kick passing throughout the league so it's definitely something that's coming to the fore and, and i think we're all really really enjoying the the football so far it's a really conversation, interesting conversation to have in the context of Tyrone as well, which is obviously something we want to chat to you about, Kyle. What, what, what's been your take on, on where they're going this year and if the style of play that we're seeing is the style of play that we're going to see in the Ulster Championship from Duger and Logan? Um, it's, look, it's been a, probably a mixed bag for Tyrone in, in, league, in league form. Won one, lost one and drew one. So, you know, we don't really know in terms of 
you know, where they're at going forward. It's we haven't had a preseason competition where you know we, we can see different players and, and different you know maybe different styles of play and adapting different game plans throughout um, throughout them games because teams definitely need you know they need different styles for different games and, and the teams do adapt in games. Uh, so I, I would be a favour of, of the more kick passing that, that's happening uh, among the, the Tyrone style of play that you know they're trying to get the ball from the half back line probably to the half four lane as quick as possible. Um, Fergal and, and Brian Duher uh, have only had what you know probably a couple of months maybe three months at most to uh, impose a game plan where the majority of that team, bar maybe one, two players, have, have been under Mickey Hart, um, have been used to probably playing a possession game and, and running it through the hands till a certain degree and getting it till a certain area and then trying to, to work something when, whenever we get to the certain, at the top of the end of the pitch. So, look, it's been a welcome change for me. I, I love to see the kick passing. It's something that I've always, even in my own game, I, lo I love to do it. So, it's been something that it's been exciting. It's really, really, really good to see. And I'm happy with the. The, the you know what they're trying to do you know there's been a lot of mistakes but you know like you, as I said the, them rewards you know with if you can take out four or five men with one kick pass in the half back line the chances are you're getting a score and albeit probably a three pointer some part of me thinks that over the last couple of years Toronto have obviously stumbled upon Colin McShane and this has been a, a brilliant totemic forward for them and then they've added obviously McKenna last year, Canavan and Donaghy over the course of the last year as well so it, it just seems that Tyrone have more forward talent but at the same time did you feel that they could have done more with the forward talent that they had when it came to their tactical approach over the last couple of years? Probably um, that would have been something that I had probably said that uh, my, my take on it would probably would have been that you know, forwards probably win matches, and we've seen it as as last number of years that, you, that inevitably the more scores you get, the better it is for the team, and, and the better chance you have of winning the game. So we had probably under Mickey's reign, you know, in the early stages, he, he probably had some of the best players in Ireland, maybe some of the best players we've ever seen, and Peter Canavan and Noel Mulligan and Stephen O'Neill and, and Sean Cavanagh. So. When he when when the sort of second wave of things came and the second group of players was coming, we probably had reverted to a style where it suited some of the the players coming defensively, maybe midfielders and Mickey didn't really trust his forwards as much as as he had done. So we we probably lined out with more defenders in our forward line just you know to compensate the style of play. So we maybe going out and playing with two maybe out and out forwards. Uh, and using maybe a couple of wing half backs in the uh, line out of ten and twelve to, to compensate the, the game plan. So, look, I, I do think it is something that, that they could have, you know, we could have maybe been braver in a sense and, and went for games and instead of trying to, you know, to curtail the, the opposition and, and, you know, as I say, be in the game at a certain stage and then try and win it from there instead of trying to win it from the outset. That's really interesting because when we think about the two biggest games that Tyrone have played in the last three years, I would say anyway, to be the 2019 semi-final against Kerry and obviously the All-Ireland in, in 2018 against yeah. Dublin. If we, if we just start with that semi-final in 19, because they're obviously playing each other this weekend as well, Kerry and Tyrone, there was a real sense of worry at halftime from a Kerry perspective that this thing was done, that Tyrone were going to continue what they did in the first half, completely smother Kerry and get the ball into Colin McShane and continue to run away from them, basically. So... Why didn't that happen? Did, did that go back to this attitude of perhaps not being on the front foot enough or not being comfortable enough in the front foot, uh, from your, in, in your opinion? Yeah, um, I know there was discussions at half time. The way we normally worked it at half time was um, we, we regrouped as a, as a player group first. So um, being involved at, in that game, we, we regrouped at half time. The management went on their own. The players always just in the change rooms take a minute take a minute or so to, to gather their, their breath and then we have a discussion of what the players and what the substitutes feel that, that they see uh, and there was discussions of, of you know do do we keep the foot down here and, and keep at it and then the management obviously have their their say and we we come to a decision then that I think that, that we sort of backed off a little and sort of that gave Gary the oxygen that they needed to get back into the game and looking back now it was, it was a game I firmly believe that Tyrone left behind and 
the was I think we we're five points up at half time, and it was it's disappointing to see the outcome because you know we're in such a strong position as you say, not being on the front foot probably long enough throughout them throughout that time as, as a group maybe. We hesitated slightly uh, uh, and said sat, sat in the back foot and invited Kerry on this and look, once you invite Kerry on you're only asking for trouble. So this was almost, I guess, uh, a reflex that you had trained within yourself to retreat a little bit or, or was this an, an actual deliberate thing to say, lads, let's sit back and defend this lead? I don't, I don't think it was a deliberate act to sit back and protect the league. I think it was like a, as you say, a bit of a reflex where uh, players probably weren't with a five-point lead, probably players weren't doing the same things that they'd done in the first half. Um, probably taking the same. I mind a few balls into Cahill McShane were were crazy. Where he, he just threw the can't mind who he was marking. Maybe someone at the back of that time. Maybe Tag Morley. And it was just people were bouncing off and were getting the ball in really, really quickly. I know there was a mistake for the for the goal where we were all thrown. we sort of caught up the pitch and it it went from a kick pass to a couple of quick hand passes and, and next thing it was in the back of our net and then all of a sudden it, it's a different game anyway but I think it was a reflex in terms of look we're five points up here if they score we can score and um, we just keep it at arm's length the whole time and look that didn't it didn't work out like Kerry got a goal and automatically they're on the front foot and they're back in the game Maybe there's nothing that could have changed the course of history in 2018 considering Toronto are up against the greatest team of all time but did at the same time something similar happen in that final in eighteen? Um, I mean, watching that game, and Tyrone went five 0 up, and I was just thinking to myself, "This is you know, if you could dream of a start, this is a start you want." And I, I do believe, looking back at that game, I think players, and I think talking to some of them, we would firmly believe they were not much of a driving seat at that time that I think players started to maybe do slightly different things on their own and not as a team. And taking shots, I mean, there was a couple of shots off the weaker foot from maybe been Frank Burns and Callum McShane, who, you know, if they had went over, yes, we're seven points up. But that, you know, that's the stage where you, you work the percentage shot, you work it till the right men, you work it till the right areas of the pitch. As you say, the greatest team of, of all time, Dublin, don't take those pot shots. They don't, they work it till the right areas. And that's something that, you know, they're probably looking back on thinking that was a, an opportunity missed as well. And I know that Dublin definitely dropped 15 men behind the ball at a certain stage, which all good teams do. You have to adapt to the situation you're in. And Dublin done that. They dropped 15 men behind the ball. Dean Rock was was playing inside Tyrone's half at that stage. And they knew whenever they were 5-0 down, look, we have got to kill the momentum here. And I, I think it was maybe a, a few players doing things on their own that, that didn't, didn't help the whole situation either. But... It's an opportunity missed, and as I say, probably you know we spoke about it before. Not being on the front foot for long enough throughout that period of time probably hampered that you know hampered that cause. And that's why what we've seen over the last couple of weeks may actually be so important because it could be a little bit of a shift there. Like I don't think Kyle anybody necessarily expects is say if it's a, a Tyrone Dublin All Ireland final for example this year for Tyrone to suddenly start playing swashbuckling football. But what they might do is play exactly how they did in 2018, except they'll have the learned experience of approaching the league with the shackles completely off and they'll know how to be on the front foot that little bit better. You're right there. Um, it's Once you're playing a certain t type of way for a certain length of time, it's going to, you know, that's going to be your your go-to, what you, would happen. So, Tyrone have been, you know, we, we can see that, that their style of play is shifting. We can see what they're trying to do. We can see that they're trying to move the ball through the foot pass. We can see that they're probably playing with more orthodox forwards. Um, they've had 12 different scores throughout the league, which, you know, in three games is a great plus for them. They have unearthed Paul Donaghy. So, as you say, playing on the front foot for, you know, or, or trying to play in the front foot and, and going after teams and, and trying to put it to bed on the scoreboard, as to say, would be, you know, it's, uh, if Throne got to an All-Ireland final, say, this year, that's that's only going to help them. That's only going to say, look, we're going to go after Dublin. We're going to go and try and, you know, put them to the pin of the collar. Kerry have done it and almost got out the gap. You know, it took a replay to get... That's the only way to beat them. That's the only way to beat Kerry, Dublin. And, you know, we've had a mini Ulster Championship as such in terms of playing Monaghan, Armagh and Donegal. You know, but at the end of the day, the, the yardstick for Throne is this weekend, and I really believe that a performance is the 
is what Brian Duhar and Fergal Logan's looking. You know, a front foot performance, go and attack, Gary, really, really go after them. And that tells you where you're at, you know, and that'll, that'll set them up for further down the line. And part of that front foot football is approaching the opposition kick out in an aggressive manner. And we had Bernard Brogan on the show yesterday talking about how much AFL he's been watching recently and how that they're at a whole other level again with their restarts and how aggressively they, they chase down the opposition. This has clearly been the way GEA has gone over the last couple of years. Are Tyrone well equipped on that front to actually smother a team on their own kick out? Um, well, that's that's going to be a lot of work that they're they're going to have to do. Every team will have a kick out strategy for on the opposition kick out for whenever they have a free kick. So, say that there's a free kick, a scoreable free for Tyrone, they will have a full court press that they have to have. And to me, the the one thing that they have to utilise there is Nell Morgan. You know, Nell Morgan is. I'm not sure. I know that you know that he plays out three for his club, but he's probably in in the top 25 or 30 club players out out the pitch in Tyrone. That's how good he is, and his kick passing is up there with the best in Ireland. So to me, that's something that they can utilise him. And we've seen teams do it. I've been at uh, looking to be at a few games um, already this year, and the Rory Began has done it. Um, the Armagh keeper Blaine Hughes has done it. So. That's that's a uh, tactic that's clearly being used, and I, I love to see it. I love to see teams coming up with different stuff, with different ideas, different tactics. So it'll be it'll be something that they should be utilising because there's now plays sweeper for his club. Um, he lines out normally at, at midfield, and, and he plays sweeper, so he can be someone that, that can be used, and he's comfortable enough in the ball where. I know sometimes we see keepers that, that you, you can sort of let them come a wee bit. Niall's not that type of man. He, if you let him come, <laughs> he's trying to shot, and he, or else he's finding a pass inside. So how far are you telling Niall Morgan to go on the Kerry kick-out this weekend, for example? Is it just to cover the full, uh, the full back and then at the full-back push-up, or is Niall Morgan going right up? Uh, no, I, I'd, be, I'd be a firm believer of Niall needs to come out past the full-back mm. line. On, on, that, on that instance, if Thrones being brave and say they're chasing the game by a point or two or whatever the state you know you have to you play you play the game at the stage you're at you know if Tyrone's winning the game and you know you're happy enough just to put a press on with, with the players on the pitch fair enough um but say Tyrone's chasing the game by a couple of points you know maybe 10 15 minutes into the second half I'd be a firm believer if Nan needs to come out and push be brave on on the kickouts and push as many Tyrone players ahead of it as possible Yes, you need you need to be careful uh, of Clifford and wh whoever else is back there, but be as brave as possible. Come out past the the, the full back line, play as close to till probably Tyrone's forty five as you can. I know I'm not sure if you've seen the clip of the Dublin game where this year in the league, um, uh, Kerry only played with two two defenders marking six Dublin forwards. That's how brave they were in the second half uh, of the Dublin kickout. Yeah, and maybe some people will say that it was uh, lunacy at times in the first half, the way Dublin managed to, to pick them off. J just on what you said there, the mini Ulster Championship that you've seen in uh, the north section of Division 1, like, I mean, Throne Kerry is a big game this weekend, but ultimately it might lead to not even a final. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the relegation battles are probably bigger fixtures to try and actually stay in Division 1 for next year. So in the context of Armagh especially, from what you've seen, is, is this a team that is ready to hold their own in Division 1 for, for the next few years rather than becoming a Ross Common or Cavan type where they yo-yo up and down between the tiers? Uh, definitely. Definitely. That's a team that, um, that that I've been really impressed with. I've seen them twice in the league so far and their forwards have been phenomenal. Stephen Campbell, Ryan, Anushin O'Neill, Rory Grugan. Um, the, you know, it's probably names that we have mentioned over the last number of years being involved with Arma and probably their main men, but been really, really impressed with them. And I think the addition of Kieran Donaghy to the backroom team has brought an extra wee edge to them. You know, uh, they have, you know, I can see it in their play that they're being slightly more physical around the middle of the field. They're maybe being a, a cuter in their play where, you know, they're trying to break it up. You know, I, I firmly believe they should have been out the gap against them, um, against Donegal. I think that it's run out of steam in, in 10 minutes and, They'll, they'll be kicking themselves because that game, well, that a win in that game keeps them out of the relegation battle. And now they're they're into a dogfight where the, the the wrong just the wrong result obviously puts them down. And but I do believe that they'll come out on the right side of the result against Roscommon. I think that they're they're I say the forward lines moving too well. They're they're racking up too much scores. So I think it's a team that that can hold their own in Division One. For me, they're the only 
probably problem is getting the defence sorted. Um, Kieran O'Hanlon, the first game out, started at number 11. Then two weeks later, he played at number seven. Um, Aidan Fokker starts at three, play, play, end up playing at 14. So getting the settled six at the back and, you know, adopting that sort of column cabinet role whenever teams, they have teams slowed up in the middle third and they can get bodies back. If they can get a, a sweeper in place where who knows his role, who, who can push out at the right times and, and get the press on, on the opposition, I think it's a team that could, that's definitely common that, that can hold their own in Division 1. Yeah, it's really exciting and I think everybody remembers that 2017 game between yourselves and Armagh. It was such a disappointment. We thought that that was going to be the renewal of a great rivalry, but I'd say that rivalry isn't too far away now, Kyle. Uh, Kyle Coney, great stuff. Thanks a million for coming on the show this morning. Great to chat to you. No problem. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Uh, it is Tyrone against Kerry. It is Donegal against Dublin in the semi-finals of a league that might not actually have a final this weekend. But still, they're going to be interesting. It's great to see uh, Division 1 North uh, getting to spread their wings this weekend and uh, seeing if this Tyrone attack is going to break down Kerry this weekend. So uh, that's all coming up this weekend. It's going to be a brilliant weekend of sport.